Hello folks, thank you for attending on my presentation called Logging Operator, the Cloud Native Fluent Ecosystem. It's not a big secret, we will talk about Fluentbit, Fluentd and Kubernetes. Just a couple of thoughts about me. I was working as an infrastructure engineer at Ustream, acquired by IBM, and after that we founded Bonsai Cloud with my friends, and it's recently acquired by Cisco. I have several years of experience in the observability field. We've been operating Kubernetes cluster since version 1.4, and I have personally more than five years experience with the Fluent ecosystem. At Bonsai Cloud, I wanted to pour all that experience into software, and that's what I will talk about today. So let's start at the beginning with the Kubernetes part. Kubernetes doesn't have too many options when it comes to logging. The container runtime stores each pod's standard output in a file on the host disk. When a user uses the kubectl logs command, the kubelet service goes to this well-known path and reads up the logs from that file. Simple as that. And that's it. There is nothing much you can change about that. So what are the problems with this? First, the logs are stored locally on a host file system. These logs eventually get rotated or they will fill the node disk. And second, be honest, the kubectl command is not always the way you want to consume your logs. So eventually you want to ship them to your preferred location or service. Of course, this solution raised several questions. To access the host file system, you need privileged containers. Moreover, there is no separation. This method doesn't respect the Kubernetes boundaries like namespaces or airbag. But let's see how this would look like. First, you have a Kubernetes cluster. After that, you deploy a daemon set, collecting and sending logs individually. But if you realize you want to batch your logs for performance or other reasons, you will need an aggregator. Later, you may want to send a portion of logs to different endpoints as well. At the end of the day, you end up hundreds of rows of configuration and a big bunch of them are copy-pasted, not mention managing secrets and other variables. This was our first approach as well, and we wanted to simplify the solution. The first version of the logging operator was born. The goal is to automate configuration generation from Fluentbit, Fluentd, and handle them as Kubernetes resources. With a really simple custom resource, you could save a lot of manual deployment and configuration. It was watching for resource changes and pulled credentials from Kubernetes secrets. The first version had some strong restrictions. It utilized Fluent tags for routing, and it allowed using Kubernetes pods app labels only as tag. Even with those restrictions, it's already lifted tremendous amount of work from the operator's shoulder. It was a big success for us. And as more and more community gathered around, it helped us identify the pain points of this solution. So after validating the use cases, we sat back to the panning table and drafted the second version of the logging operator. We had a couple of strong requirements in mind. Namespace isolation, Kubernetes label selectors, the same way as Kubernetes service or kubectl command works, and multiple flow and multiple output support. So roughly a year later, in September 2019, we came out with the new custom resources a new core model to be more Kubernetes-like. Let's see how this works in the logging pipeline. Note that the following principles are still the base foundation of version 3 as well. We collect all logs with Fluentbit. Our label router plugin identifies log flows based on Kubernetes metadata. This enables the logging operator to route logs based on arbitrary pod labels. So how is this represented in the custom resource? A flow defines a login flow. You have two options. Use a flow definition with a namespace or a cluster flow across namespaces. In a flow, you can use Kubernetes-like label selectors to select the relevant logs. Empty selectors mean all pods within a namespace or within a cluster. After selecting the relevant logs, you can apply FluentD filters on them. In the custom resource, you can define several individual filters in order. Typical examples are parsers, Prometheus metric exporter, or JYP filter. 
The last section of the flow custom resource is the output reference. You can define local output for outputs in a namespace or global outputs for cluster output resources. It is possible to define more than one output for a flow. There is one missing piece of the login pipeline. We need to define the outputs as well. Similarly to flow and cluster flow, there is an output and cluster output. When you configure the output parameters, you can inject sensitive data from Kubernetes secrets. You just need to refer to them like you would do in a pod definition. After you apply those custom resources, there is one more step the operator will do. It will create a configuration check pod. For the system integrity, only upon a successful configuration check will the operator swap the active configuration to the new configuration. This check runs on every changes on the custom resources. We arrived at the last station of the logging operator. The core concepts remain the same, but we released the version 3 on March 2020. We added several community-driven new features, like not just selecting, but excluding logs from a flow, namespace filter for cluster flows, and default flow for the leftover data that haven't matched any other logging flows. I'm happy that the operator reached more than 600 GitHub stars, have an active Slack community, and if you are using Rancher from version 2.5 and above, you're already using logging operator, as it is the default logging backend for it. Okay, so how does this look in practice? Let's see a small demo. So as a first step, I will install the logging operator using the OneEye CLI tool. OneEye is actually not just a CLI, but an operator as well. It helps us manage many observability-related tools on Kubernetes. Moreover, OneEye will visualize for us the resources we create to manage the logging operator. It's an easy way to keep track of what, do, where and when in the system. The first test after install is to configure the logging resource. Configuring logging resource is pretty easy. We got a good template for it that we can decide to edit or not. And after that, simply just apply it to the system. So after creating the logging resource, we can create our first output as well. Let's create a cluster output with type S3 for AWS Object Store and uh, select a bucket name like Cubicon Test Bucket and choose a region like uh, EU West 1 for this bucket. After that, one eye will know that I set my AWS credentials in my environment and create a Kubernetes secret from them. With that secret, it will create my output. After that, we have to create a cluster flow resource. The cluster flow resource needs a cluster output. We choose the S3 output that we just created, and if we accept the template, it's just ready to go, and if you apply to the cluster, it stores the logs. Checking the created resources is pretty easy. You can use the kubectl get logging log command to print out all the information from the logging resources. Moreover, OneI provides a OneI ingress connect command to connect to the web UI. On the web UI, we can visualize the flows, outputs that we just created and have a brief monitoring information as well. So let's see a more complex example. For this, I will install the OneI log generator tool, which will produce Nginx access logs in a controlled way. So now I will set it to one request per second. After that, we will create an output and the flow to count all the requests with response codes and expose them as Prometheus metrics. To achieve this, first we have to create an output. For this case, we will create a null output. This is a special case because it doesn't really transport the logs anywhere, instead just drops them. But it's really useful if you have a filter that produces output itself and you don't really need your logs. It also means that we don't have to specify any parameter for this output. 
we just need to apply to the cluster and it's ready to use by any of the flow we will create later. Now we have to create the flow resource. The flow resource is really similar to the output resource. We have the same API group and we specify the kind flow and give it a name uh, like this is our access slot flow and after that we have to specify what filters we want to apply. As we talked about it's an Nginx access log and FluentD has a built-in parser for Nginx so we can use the parse type Nginx for this kind of resource. We have two more important attributes to add. The remove key name field is removing the original message from the log and the reserve data to means that we want to keep the Kubernetes metadata next to our log. After that we specify the match section to select only the logs that match the labels app dot kubernetes dot io per name log generator this will only pick the log that we really need the last thing we have to specify is the output itself and we can use our dev null output that we just created as we finish creating the resource we just need to apply it to the cluster So now we have a valid output and a valid flow as well. But it's not enough to expose metrics. To do that, we have to add another filter called Prometheus. In the Prometheus filter, we have to define metrics. The metrics should have a name. Let's have a name HTTP response code total. We have to specify a description for a metric it's a to total number of requests. This is a counter type matrix, means that we count from zero to infinite the request. And we add labels, code, and uh, we add the label value from the log message code attribute. We add a static labels, the app log generator, to identify our matrix. After that, we just need to update the resource on the cluster. So we have every configuration in place. Let's check if they are working. We can use the metrics service for the Fluendi and check uh, in a web browser whether the required metrics are presented. As you can see, that there are already a couple of response codes available in the matrix. So we have our matrix in place, but it's more important that we have this matrix in Prometheus as well. We can open a Grafana, go to the Explore menu, and just put it in the metric name and hit search, and voila! We have all the metrics, we can use the read function and uh, check how the log generator produces the random status codes. We have time for one more example as well. So let's create a namespace called infra and uh, we create a new resource called hostailer. Hostailer is a custom resource of the logins extension, another great tool embedded in OneEye. With this, we can create pods that can tail logs from the host file system. Let's call this resource a systemd kubelet and put it in the infra namespace we just created. This resource will be a systemd tailor that tails the journal log of systemd. We only need to specify a couple of attributes like the disabled force, the max entries, let's say 100, the name of this tailor kubelet, this will be the container name, and a systemd filter that narrows down 
what kind of logs we want to tear from the system deep. After applying the resources, it will deploy pods that will tear the logs for us to the standard output. Let's create an output to store all that Kubernetes logs somewhere. We will name this uh, Loki because it will be a Loki output and we will put this into the infra namespace. For every output we can define the buffering mechanism. As a Loki output we will uh, define a time key output, it means that every 10 seconds we will flash the messages. Uh, we want to use the UTC time keys in the messages and uh, we use time key wait parameter 2 seconds to wait. And last but not least, we set the configure Kubernetes labels to that will attach the Kubernetes labels to Loki metadata. The last parameter is the URL, is the Loki service URL we will use in the cluster. After finishing the output, we just apply it to the cluster as well. So let's move on and create the Kubelet flow. It will be familiar, we use the same API groups, the kind flow. We have to specify the metadata, we name the flow Kubelet, and we put it in the infra namespace as well. Remember that you need to have a same namespace for the output and flow to work together. We don't really need any filters, but we want to match uh, the logs to select the labels uh, app.kubernetes.io per name host tailors. And we specify an output for this flow, but for demonstration purposes, I will intentionally typo this output. Let's apply this resource to the cluster as well. See how logging operator handles this situation. We can see two outputs, one with red circle, this is the missing, the typoed one, and one with a normal black circle, and this is the orphan output, we just didn't connect it to anywhere. When we check the configuration of the flow, we can see that, yes, we are typo this output. But we don't need no fancy UI to check the problem. We can use the command line tools as well. The kubectl get logging all command will print out all the resources. And the resources with active force are the problematic ones. But what are those problems exactly? We have to check the resource status field for it. We can write a simple vanilla kubectl get flow hyphen n infra kubelet hyphen o json path and check the dot status dot problems field for them. It will print out that we didn't specify the proper output. Just for fun, I will fix this issue on the UI because the UI and the CLI tool works from the same resources as well. So here I just need to fix this typo in the Loki output and everything should work as expected. Just to be 100% sure, we can go back to the CLI tool and print out all the logging resources and check if everything is fine. I know this sounds too good to be true, and logging operator is not a silver bullet. It highly depends on the underlying components, and sometimes it can amplify a small problem into bigger ones. For example, Fluent debuffering. It can exhaust underlying file system, or it can change the message orders, which is a problem if you want to ingest logs into Loki. And another problem that it's hard to see what inside. A faulty plugin can exhaust resources and it's a huge task to find which plugin causing the problem. 
FluentBit is a newer, moderner uh, architecture, but it has its own issues as well. It can fail silently, for example, attaching Kubernetes metadata, which will cause labor router to drop messages. And it's a bit harder to prototype because it has only a restrictive way to apply plugins. So last but not least, talk about the future of the logging operator. We have a couple of things in our mind. Advanced routing based on richer metadata or log content, apply airbag rules to different log streams, and provide a logging API to have a unified experience enhanced with authentication and authorization to be easier to use logging operator as a component in a bigger system. And we are watching several interesting projects in the cloud native landscape. Open Telemetry Collector, which speaks the Fluent protocol, and Tremor, which is an interesting approach for collecting and transporting logs as well. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Have a nice day.